In this lecture, we're going to talk about hypergeometric probability. First, let's find out what is hypergeometric probability. It's the method to compute probabilities when selection is done from two different groups with the following conditions. Each group contains different items. We select items without replacement. The order of arrangements does not matter. If these requirements are satisfied, we organize the following chart. For each group, we have the numbers, and we have the number of selections, and we have the total. And then, this is the formula for hypergeometric probability using combination formula. It seems intimidating at, in the beginning, but it's actually an easy process. In this example, all registered voters are supposed to vote for five city council members. There are 14 candidates five females and nine males. We want to find the probability of selecting three females and two males. If we make our chart, we have females and males. We have the number for each group and we have the number of selection from each group. Now we can use the hypergeometric probability formula Five females selecting three times nine males selecting two. This would be the total number of desired outcome divided by the total number of all outcomes, which is 14 selecting five. Once we do the calculation, we get 180 divided by 1001. In a city-sponsored lottery game, you must select four numbers from a list of 20 numbers. The fundraisers also draw four numbers randomly as winning numbers. What is the probability that you have all four winning numbers? Again, we're going to make our chart. We have four winning numbers, so there must be 16 losing numbers for a total of 20 numbers. And our desired event is to have four winning numbers, therefore we have zero losing numbers. Now we can go ahead and use the hypergeometric probability formula. Four winning numbers, we have all four times. 16 losing numbers, we have none of those, divided by 20 numbers in total, and we're selecting four of them. Once the calculation is done, that probability is 1 divided by 4,845. The box contains six red balls and 14 black balls. Suppose you are blindfolded and randomly select three different balls. What is the probability that you have selected three red balls? Again, we're going to go ahead and make the chart. We have groups of red balls and black balls. Six red, 14 black for a total of 20 balls. Our desired event is to select three red balls out of three selections. So that leaves us with zero black balls. Using the hypergeometric probability formula, 6C3, that's for the red balls. 14C0, that would be for the black balls, divided by 20 C3, that would be for all 20 balls. 
and this probability is 1 over 57. Now using the same box, this time we want to know what's the probability that we select three black balls. We make the chart. This time we don't want any red balls, zero, but we do want three black balls. That would be three. Using the hypergeometric probability formula again. For the red balls will be 6C0. For the black balls would be 14C3. And a total number of outcomes would be 20C3. Once this is simplified, that probability is 91 over 285. In California Super Lotto, we must choose five numbers from 1 to 47 for the winning numbers and one number from 1 to 27 for the winning mega number. Here's a picture of it. Now what's the probability of having all five winning numbers and have the winning mega number as well? Now this process is done without replacement and order does not matter. The five winning numbers are chosen from list of 47 numbers and the winning mega number is chosen from a list of 27 numbers. We make our chart. Now this chart is going to be extended version of the earlier charts. So we have 47 regular numbers 27 mega numbers available. The winning numbers are 5, the losing numbers are 42. There is one winning mega number and 26 losing mega numbers. Now we want 5 winning numbers and 1 mega number. So let's compute the total number of ways this can be done. For the winning numbers that would be 47 C5 times and for the mega numbers will be 27 C0. So that's five selections from regular numbers and one selection from the mega number. So the answer is 41,416,353 different ways. Now for our desired event of selecting five winning numbers and the winning mega number, we get 5C5 for the winning numbers. There are 42 losing numbers, but we don't have any one of those. 1C1 and 26 0. There is one winning mega number. We have that but 26 losing numbers and we have none of those. So that would be one total way. Now we're ready to find the probability for our desired event. Five winning zero losing and one winning mega number. And that probability is one divided by 41,416,353. Now consider again the California Super Lotto. What is the probability of having exactly three winning numbers and a losing mega number. Now when we say exactly three winning numbers then there is also two losing numbers to be included as well along with a losing mega number. So our chart is going to look like this. For the winning numbers out of five we have three of them. 
out of 42 losing numbers, we have two of them. The one winning mega number, we don't have that, but we should have one of those 26 losing mega number. So the number for our desired event will be 5C3 times 42C2 times 1C0 times 26C1. Once we do the calculation, we get 223,860 different ways. So the probability for our desired event of having three winning numbers, two losing numbers, and one losing mega number would be this fraction, which can be reduced to 74,620 over 13,805,451. So this is very similar to hypergeometric probability formula is the extended version of it. A coin jar contains three quarters, five dimes, and twelve nickels. Again, assuming a blindfolded person grabs three coins from this jar, what is the probability that this person has collected 40 cents? The only way to get a total of 40 cents while drawing three coins is to have one of each type of coin. So we can make our charts. Three quarters, we have one of them. Five dimes, we have one of them. Twelve nickels, we have one of those. That's the total of 20 coins from the coin jar that this blindfolded person has selected or has grabbed three coins. The total number of ways this can be done is given by 20C3, there are 20 coins and grabbing three of them, which is 1140 different ways. Now for the number of ways for our desired event to happen, we get Three quarters, we have one of them. Five dimes, we have one of them. And 12 nickels, and we have one of those. So we do the calculation, and this will be 180 different ways. Now we're ready for the probability for our desired event. Probability that this person has a total of 40 cents, grabbing three coins will be the same as probability of one quarter, one dime, and one nickel. We have the total number of ways, 180 for the desired event, divided by 1,140 for the total number of ways of grabbing three coins out of this coin jar. And this reduces to 3 over 19. I hope this presentation helped you understand hypergeometric probability and how to use it when situation requires it.